Hello, and welcome to the Angry Ewok channel. Today, I'd like to discuss something I call pinwheeling uh, or undercutting. It's basically a concept that allows two large ships to work in close proximity to one another. I'm not a big user of two larges, but it can be problematic if you allow the two ships to get in each other's way and creating a situation I like to call activation locking. Um, so we're going to quickly go through that and hopefully give you some pointers on some ways to avoid activation locking yourself and some ways to use your large ships in close proximity without getting tangled up. For our example here today we'll be using two star destroyers. You can use any two larges obviously but this is uh, kind of the, the classic version of this. Um, you'll notice that these two ships are basically running parallel to each other and the distance that we're most concerned with is the distance from the side to the uh, one side to the other this red line um, and I typically like to make that distance at least about distance two um, and the reason for that is that as as these two rectangles are moved near each other and they tend to rotate to the right or to the left as they turn their nose to pursue to the left or the right and what happens is that space gets smaller and smaller and you can see this when we turn these two star destroyers on their sides and now that distance that safe zone where you can move without overlapping is much much tighter um, this is because we're moving rectangles not ovals um, and the corners stick out as they rotate so these two star destroyers have been deployed forward in their deployment zone uh, abreast of one another and at some point the enemy will attack on the side because there's no benefit to attacking directly into both of these that just makes it really easy for both of them to get their guns on and you can figure that out on your own um, but invariably there will be an inside ship and an outside ship and the inside ship needs to try to go speed one um, and it needs to do as many clicks as it can so that typically means dropping to one and using a navigate dial to double click to the right. Um, sometimes there are situations where you may want to remain at two so that you can get three clicks in, the, in one activation, um, but that carries you farther forward and makes it easier to isolate that inside ship um, by itself. So be wary of that. I typically like to run a speed one maneuver with two clicks at the first joint so that I can run a speed three maneuver with the other ship and have them pretty much on the same plane once I get done moving them. You can see here that the outside star destroyer comes up to speed three um, and adds a, adds a click to first joint with the navigate command and does this. That puts both those ships roughly on the same plane um, where their guns are kind of in the same threat in the same area. You can see that we have our kill box set up here and so then the question becomes, what do we do with our flotilla? A lot of times you we want to allow our flotilla to be one of our stalling activations that wants to go early in the round. And what can happen is if you aren't thinking about it, you can take your little flotilla and perform a stalling activation and get in the way and then block one of your big ships, which is terrible because they're supposed to be supporting the ships, not getting in the way. And if you allow one ship to bump, it allows the other one to get isolated. So, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll undercut with the flotilla. Um, so for example, here I would come to speed one, double click to the left, preparing myself to follow this kind of green trajectory because most flotillas have a comms net um, or some kind of bubble effect. They don't have to be shooting their guns to be effective. They just need to be nearby. And so they can typically be, interact with the fleet via those auras from the rear arcs just fine. On the second turn, um, a lot of times you're going to want to go with the inside ship first so that you know exactly where how much room your outside ship has to play with so you don't have an, un, an unintentional bump. Um, again, speed one, again, double clicking to the right. At this point, we've done four clicks to the right and we're pretty much parallel with, you know, with our own board edge. This is very good for intercepting an attack coming down into your uh, down in the end, like you see the red arrow. Um, and then the other Star Destroyer oftentimes needs to stay at speed three and another nav click can do this, something like this. Um, this is a straight, straight double click. You'll see our kill box created there and you'll see that the flotilla now has a nice, easy escape route um, to continue to throw out navigates or to tokens or repair tokens or whatever, um, but be relevant and hopefully tuck in behind your Star Destroyers and be very safe from enemy fire. 
so that's kind of your, your general pinwheel formation. Um, pretty good at getting around on a target. Not the best if they're coming really fast at an oblique angle. And for that reason, I'll discuss undercutting. Also, I don't typically like to deploy two larges on the same plane with one another. I like to offset them, and you'll see that here in a minute um, and see why. But what you're trying to set up is a situation where your fleet can address a threat into the boundary, like into the into the shortboard edge if it try if they try to sleep slip through there or turn to the right undercut and get positioned to attack something that's trying to severely attack in and under your fleet um, and we'll go through some examples now unlike in our first example these two star destroyers are offset I have the, the star destroyer that's going to be on the outside uh, somewhat re recessed back you'll see the blue distance indicating the, the amount of distance between the front and the back, uh, the front edges of that, those two Star Destroyers, and then the red distance is the distance between the Star Destroyers. It's again a little bit wider, about distance two is about as close as you want them to be. Again, you do not want these ships to get too far apart because you could definitely spread them out and do this with no problems and not be in, in any danger of overlapping or bumping but then they're outside of supporting distance, meaning that one ship cannot support and protect another one. They can attack one without having to face repercussions from the other, and that's not what we want. Also, you'll see this green line. I like to take my support ships and flotillas and give them about a 45 degrees tilt um, so that it's much easier to undercut behind my lead ship, and I don't have to... You'll notice when we did the pinwheel a minute ago, um, the lead Star Destroyer had to activate first to give space for the flotilla to slip behind. This is a little better way of doing that, I think, because once the Star Destroyer moves forward one, you'll see that I now have a space for that flotilla to tuck in behind and continue to activate um, as my first or second or early delaying activation without bumping anything or getting in the way. So from this staggered setup, we can easily attack uh, somebody trying to flank us into the boundary. When I say that, what I mean is the short edge. You can easily see these two blue lines. That's probably a speed one double click from the uh, from the inside Star Destroyer, and maybe a speed two or speed three double click uh, at some joint from the other Star Destroyer. We can easily put both our guns into a good position such that it would be a poor choice for somebody to try to attack into the short edge. Um, but what well, this this formation is specifically designed to counter is or give you a better shot at countering if you're running two larges in close proximity is an attack from an oblique angle here like you see the red arrow um, and the way we're going to try to do that is we're going to try to undercut um, you'll see that the leftmost star destroyer will try a hard to the right at speed one that's the green movement then another hard to the right at speed two with an extra click that's the yellow movement and then the star destroyer uh, the lead star destroyer is going to just do you know whatever he can to get around and maintain you know he's going to try to try to avoid getting isolated he's going to try to not stick his nose out there until both uh until the other ship comes around and tries to do something like that blue path and we're basically anticipating the enemy trying to get into this big white bubble here uh where our, kind of where our flotilla is this is not always a threat because the enemy might not be fast enough but against a fast moving fleet or something that has you out positioned really badly this is something that you need to be able to do or the leftmost star destroyer just doesn't get to fight and if you can beat somebody with one ship tied to behind your back you're pretty good but i don't trust it against good players so in this undercut situation the uh the middle star destroyer is going to do Speed two, three clicks to the right, double clicking at the first joint so that he can get, um, he can minimize his forward motion as much as possible to keep from giving away shots on him before his fleet gets around and into position. Then the other Star Destroyer is probably going to delay and pick up a token from this flotilla, uh, or at the very least is going to make sure that when he moves, he tries to plop into a position where he's going to be able to receive a token from this comms net flotilla. Because a lot of times you're going to want to have a navigate here because you want to be able to go from one to three if you need it um so but he'll right here he could do a two but that's going to really really cram him into this the front of that star story and start other star story to start activation locking himself so he's going to actually do a speed one double click to the right and try to get to a position where he can undercut 
So this is the position after everybody's moved in turn one. Um, you can see the flotilla has a nice easy path to continue to feed tokens, but slip out behind the Star Destroyers. Um, right now we're in such a situation I call activation locking. And the reason I say that is because the rear Star Destroyer, if it goes, if it tries to speed up, it runs the risk of bumping itself and not getting its full movement and being stuck in a bad spot. This is not ideal. We do not like this, but we want, and we want to get out of this situation as fast as we possibly can. So obviously we'll start delaying with our flotilla. Our flotilla will do something like this. And he's going to continue pretty much doing this and trying to hang in this area and do this little green maneuver and tail end behind um, so he can continue to feed tokens or push squadrons or whatever he's doing. Um, and then the lead star destroyer is going to want to get back to one. He wants to pull the speed back and double click because remember we're being attacked um, almost down our long board edge. So he doesn't want to progress any farther forward than he has to because if he does he's going to get beat on um, without a good way of retaliating. And so that, that maneuver right there is about as far forward as he wants to be. Um, and it opens the door for the second Star Destroyer who can then with a navigate dial go from one to three using the token from the flotilla and go here. And that's a pretty good spot. They're very tight. They're not activation lock, but they're, they're kind of restricted because of their proximity. But a better play often would be to actually do a speed two maneuver like this. This is again your three clicks at speed two, you know, two clicks at the first joint, one click at the second joint. You'll see that there's more space between those two star destroyers. Um, if one of them, if the inside one wants to go or the outside one wants to go, they can. They're not in danger of inter overlapping each other and it throws, it casts a bigger net to catch whatever's trying to slip in behind us. You can see our overlapping uh, fields of fire in the red circle. We can see our, our uh, arc lines for our double arcs here. It's very hard to slip through that. Um, thing to note though is that the rightmost star destroyer is probably going to be taking a lot of heat here. So you probably want to start dialing up repair commands and you probably want to start dialing up or, or, or engineering uh, navigate commands to try to get it out of there. Um, if it's something that's not not durable enough to take what you're trying to do with it um, For example, if this were a Providence and a Recusant, you would want the Recusant to be the left ship the, the undercutting ship You would not want it to be the lead ship because it's going to take more fire You want something that can take it in that middle uh, Slot of your formation because it's going to be the thing engaging the enemy the most and once it gets its shots here, it's probably going to increase speed three and escape away from the fleet. Thank you for watching. I hope that was interesting. Um, maybe this helped you, maybe it didn't. Uh, you don't see a lot of double larges these days unless it's double onagers. Um, and they don't really obey any of these rules because they shoot so far. Um, and you also see double large from separatists a lot of times and they do try to use this. But because the Providence is tough, it usually sits in that middle slot and because the Recusant has basically no bad arcs. They, whoever designed it, designed it such that it has almost the same firepower anywhere in a 300 degree arc in a, around the ship. And so unlike most ships, unlike like ships that I think are properly designed, it doesn't really have a weak point that can be flown into, into and exploited. So what happens is instead of having to really concern yourself with getting your arcs around and not blocking yourself, uh, the Recusant and Providence combination, the Providence kind of just slow rolls in there and uses its, its, its natural tankiness and watt tambor and all those kinds of things um, to absorb damage and, and function well in that lead ship role. And then the Recusant, it's particularly it's Patriot's Fist because of the, I don't know, why it was point costed that way or designed that way but it basically you don't have to fly fly it well to get good shots out of it um, so a lot of this can be ignored largely for separatists but most fleets that have to actually fly it fly well to hit stuff um, you need to have this figured you need to account for this in your deployment you need to have some practice with it so that you're able to do this quickly and without you know activation locking yourself particularly in turn two and three when 
you really need to go with whatever is the most important ship because usually it's it's either double or you need to activate squads or something like that um, don't tie your own hands with geometry uh, you know that's beating yourself make the other guy beat you don't beat yourself and the best way to do that is to not activation lock yourself 